So, earlier this year, one of my contacts over at DeepCool asked if I wanted to review one of their computer cases. Now, obviously, I decided that yes, I wanted to do that. And so, fast forward one month, here it is, right here, ready to review. And no, it's not that one. It's, it's not this case. Don't look at this one. It's not this. <laughs> So if you look at some of the marketing material that Deepcore releases, you'll see that they actually seem to be quite proud of the front panel on the L case. Now that's probably for quite a good reason. It actually looks really nice and it doesn't use that horrible glossy finish that so many manufacturers have started to use. It's nice, it's matte and it doesn't attract any fingerprints, which is really nice considering that the panel on the side, the uh, tempered glass panel, is disgusting in terms of fingerprints. You touch that once and you, the fingerprints are there. They, you'll never get rid of them. The dust and the fingerprints, you'll be cleaning it every single day. Um, but in terms of the front panel, it's actually really nice, despite the fact it lacks in functionality in quite possibly every single way. Um, as far as I can tell, you can't remove it. I cannot work out how to remove the front panel. It has a small grill at the bottom for airflow, so that's quite nice. It also has a grill on the side for airflow but you can't remove it, there's no 5.25 inch drive base, you won't be putting in any um, CD drives, any sort of temperature monitors, anything like that. So that's out the window, won't be happening, it's not a sort of panel that you can slide open with a hinge, it's not nothing like that, it's not replaceable, it is just there and it looks nice. And, yeah, and granted, to be fair, it does look nice, but that's really all it does. So it's all very well and good if your computer case looks fantastic and in this case it actually get it computer case in this in this case anyway the point is that you also need to make sure that your computer parts are going to fit in well and that they're not going to be too difficult to put inside because you know that's kind of quite important so there are a few things that deep have done really well here for example, my motherboard mounts came pre-installed, so I didn't actually have to worry about matching up all the holes, making sure I did it all properly. And not only that, but they also have a few other sort of nice things. So the power supply, uh, if you have quite a large power supply, it's not too big of a problem because the hard drive mount is actually able to slide along to allocate room for an extra, extra sized power supply. So if you've got a really sort of beefy 1200 watt power supply, it shouldn't be too much of a problem because you can slide the hard drives along in the bottom of the bay to allocate more room for your power supply. One other thing that Deepcore includes by standard is this really easy to use and remove the dust filter that they have on the top of the case. So you can see it up here and there it is, it's that easy to remove, it's magnetic so you just slide it off and you can plop it back on, just make sure you line it, line it up correctly which is quite difficult to do when you're not looking at the case and you're trying to look at a camera but if you actually have eyes and you're looking at it, it's actually incredibly easy to do. The L case also has two mounts for 2.5 inch drives, so that's typically going to be an SSD for you. Now that is mounted right above the PSU shroud, which actually masks the power supply so you can't see it. It's actually another really nice feature. So they also actually have their own sort of small cable management holes, which are really nice. And you can also use those for plugging in your USB headers and your audio headers into your motherboard. But the year is 2018, and now you're asking, what about RGB? And I can definitely promise you the L case comes well packed full of RGB. So it comes with one LED lighting strip at the top, which you can use to sort of light up your case in different colours. And not only that, but it is an expandable system. So you can expand it to synchronise with all of your other deep cool products, such as their AIO liquid coolers that also have RGB built in. Now, not only that, but the case does have built-in buttons on the top of the case, so that has three buttons, the first of which is labelled S for speed, the middle one is to control the brightness, and the final one controls the mode, so that's the colours, whether it's turning on and off, whether it's flashing, whatever it's doing, and that is what that button does. Now, unfortunately, that does now lead us through to my first problem, and there will be a few with this case. The front I.O. on the top of the case it has blue LEDs in it, which is nice, so you can use it at night time. But for a case with RGB in the name, you'd think that the lighting around that front I.O. would be RGB. But it's not. It's stuck in blue, despite the fact that the buttons to control RGB are right next to it, which is incredibly frustrating because you just think, they've bothered to put RGB in the rest of the case, why can't they just put it in the front I.O.? 
So if you don't like blue, then mm, I'm sorry, but you're going to be stuck with a blue Frontio, and that's really annoying. <laughs> Speaking of Frontio, you do only get one USB 3.0 port as well as one USB 2.0 port. Now, personally, I feel that's a little bit lacking. In 2018, I'd expect to see a USB-C port. However, that's sort of maybe more for more premium cases, so I can kind of forgive that one. However, what I did definitely expect was a reset button. It's not a particularly difficult thing to include on the case, so I was quite disappointed to see that they hadn't included a hard reset button. But being a mid-tower case, the old case does definitely have pretty good water cooling support. You can fit up to one 360mm rad at the front of the case, as well as one 280mm rad at the top of the case. Now, that actually is pretty much all you would ever need for a water cooling system. You're not really going to need any more, and if you are, then a mid-tower case is definitely not the way to go. So that does definitely bring us on to some of the downsides that I have found whilst using this case. So, one major problem that I found was cable management. I definitely feel that could have been done a lot better. For instance, there aren't really any grommets that can be used for hiding or sort of masking cables. And not only that, but the biggest problem is, where the hell do I route my GPU cables? Like, so you have your sort of diagonal panel, but is that for, is that for cable management? I don't think so. It looks pretty shitty like that. However, I don't feel that it feels right going through where the 24 pin connect on the motherboard is supposed to go, because that also feels wrong. Um, on cases like the NZXD H440, which I have here, actually, there's a little hole down by the bottom of the graphics card, and it roots it down by the GPU. It's perfect. And I, it's not. It's just a hole. Like, it's one little hole that you can include in the case, and it makes it so much better, but they haven't. So that's a bit of a problem for me, and I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. So maybe if they sorted that out, I'd be a lot sort of more comfortable with it. But if you had something like an EVGA, uh, so EVGA graphics card and you were to use, I can't remember what it's called, but their little connector that runs around the side and it moves the power connector, then that would be really useful because it would look a lot better and you could probably route it through that little diagonal hole that's there for some weird reason. Something else that's definitely worth noting is that the case does only come with two 120mm fans. It doesn't have a 140mm and it doesn't have any others at all. Uh, you have two empty slots at the front for additional fans if you want to use them and I definitely recommend you pick some up. So maybe even replace the ones that come with the case as well because they're not particularly fantastic. Like they'll, get, they'll get the job done definitely but you can definitely get fans that are quieter and have better performance for not too much more money. So it would definitely be worth picking those up at some point. Overall, the Earl case will definitely be winning my value award for this first half of 2018. It's actually a really good value for money case. It's got beautiful tempered glass side panel, enough room for all your hard drives and SSDs, and fantastic water cooling support. It only has a few minor bugbears, which, to be honest with you, aren't even that big of a deal. They're potentially things that you could expect with more high-end cases. I'm being a little bit picky when I'm talking about those, but in reality, I definitely recommend you pick up this case if you're looking for something mid-tower on a budget and you really are a fan of RGB and you like your tempered glass side panels. It's a fantastic case and I recommend you pick it up since it's only about £80 on Amazon UK at the moment. Can't talk for the US market. I don't live there. Don't care. US, whatever you want to do. I don't care. I'm in the UK. So pick it up on the UK Amazon store for only about £80. Definitely worth it. Fantastic value for money. So if you found this review helpful, please do hit like and subscribe. Don't forget to leave a comment, let me know any feedback or future reviews you'd like me to do. In the meantime, make sure you watch the video when it's coming onto your screen now. I'll make another video detailing blue stacks later on, but for now we're focusing on watching some films. So simply follow the installation instructions, they're nice and easy. Just make sure you press the blue so the green download button on the home page, the next green download button on the next page and then just follow the installation instructions in the program. Okay, so once you have the...